Good afternoon, everyone. I'm happy for Gloria from Uganda Estates. I'm in Form 6, and I'm going to take you through number 9A. So in number 9A, we're given the speed, which is a V, and 8 meters per second. We're given the area, a 0 0.01 meters square. We're also given the distance that we're going to be H. So our H is equal to 10 meters. And then we also have the density of water. So density of water is equal to 1,000 kilograms per meter cube. So in this question, we are supposed to get the rate at which the pump is working. And literally, they mean the one that has power of the pump. And if I'm to define power, power is the rate at which energy is transferred. So you can say it's the work done per second. So here we're going to get the work done per second. And in order to get the work done per second, we need the potential energy gained by this water at, at uh, per second, plus the kinetic energy gained by the water per second. So if I'm to make a small sketch here of my pump, To look, this water is going to be drawn at a certain distance, which is 10 meters, and then it's going to be issued at a certain uh, speed, which is 8 meters per second. So, as it's being drawn along this distance, it's going to be gaining potential energy, and then as it's being issued out at this velocity, it's going to be gaining kinetic energy. So, that's why I'm telling you that the work done. By this pump per second is the potential energy gained by the water per second plus the kinetic energy gained by water per second. So if you look at the formula of getting a potential energy, we need the mass. And then also of getting the kinetic energy, we shall also need the mass. And if you look at what we're given here, we do not have the mass. So we're supposed to get the mass, and we have that mass is equals to volume times density. They are given the density good and fine, but you're not given the volume. But from this information here, we can get the volume. And volume is equal to the speed times the cross-sectional area. So now, volume of water drawn and issued. equals to the velocity times the cross-section of area. And our, sorry, yeah, velocity. So our velocity is 8 times the cross-section of area to 0 0.01. And our unit is going to be meters cubed per second. So this will give us 0 0.08 meters cubed per second. So now we have our volume and we can get the mass. So mass of what I've drawn and issued is equal to the volume of oil times that density of water. So our volume is 0 0.08 times our density, which is a thousand. And the unit is kilograms per second. So this will give us 80 kilograms per second. So now we have the mass that we're going to use to get the potential energy gained by the water per second, and also to get the kinetic energy gained by the water per second. So what then? By the pump. Is equal to that potential energy gained by water per second plus the kinetic energy 
So here, the formula for getting the potential energy gained by the quarter per second is equal to m g h. And then for getting the kinetic energy gained by the water per second is equal to a half. So we have our mass, which is this, which is 80 times 9 times 8. Plus a half times eighty times eight squared. So this gives us seven thousand eight hundred and forty. And the unit is now joules per second plus two thousand. 560, which is joules per second. So our final answer is going to be 10,100 joules per second. But you know that joules per second is the same as watts. So I'm going to make here my conclusion. Therefore, the work then by the pounds. Second. Because the rate at which the pound is working. And therefore, our final answer is 10,400 watts. And this is the final answer they need. It. Thank you. Um, hi, I'm Faith Ageno from Uganda Secondary School, doing uh, number nine, part B. Uh, so for my number, uh, we had a cow of mass 800 kilograms pulling a trailer of 200 kilograms. So you notice I drew my sketch, the pre-sketch before, and I used a ruler. So I'm emphasizing that this is mechanics and you have to be neat in order to get that mark. So you, your sketch has to be neat. And to do that, you need a ruler. So we have a cow of mass 800. We have that, that car pulling a trailer of 200 kilograms up an inclined plane at an angle of sine inverse of theta. Uh, sine inverse is equal to, sorry, a sine inverse of 1 out of 14 is our angle. So my angle, I'm going to let the angle be theta. And I have a sine inverse of 1 out of 14 equal to theta. Therefore, my sine theta is going to be. Um, one out of 14. So uh, uh, we've been given, the father told us that, so since this guy is pulling this, there's going to be tension in this string, which I'm going to T, and since this is a rough plane, we have resistances, uh, independent, independent resistances. We have a resistance for this car, which I'm going to call F1. And then we have a resistance on the trailer which I'm going to call F2. 
Yeah. So we further be so for this. So these masses uh, have weights, which I can show you here. We have this weight here at 200 G, where my G is um, 9.8. And then I have for this one, um, 800 G. So we have to get the components of this weight that's perpendicular to the incline and the one that's parallel to the incline. So for this one, I have a 200 G for feature. This is the component of the weight that is perpendicular to the incline. And same thing for this one. For feature. So if you notice, uh, my, my arrow for the, the component of the weight is a half arrow. That's what it's supposed to be like. And then the one that's but parallel to the incline is going to be 200 G sine theta. Same thing here, we're going to have 800 G sine theta. Um, so we've been told that uh, there's a force exerted by this engine that's pulling this whole body up which is 1,000 newtons. So that is going in that opposite direction. 1,000 newtons. So uh, I think yeah, that's it. And we've been told that this whole system is moving up at a steady speed. And we know that at a steady speed, the acceleration is equal to zero. For this, don't forget to put your normal reaction. Again, use the ruler. I'm going to call this my R2 and my R1. So proceeding at a steady speed, the acceleration is equal to zero. So if the acceleration is zero, that means the net forces are equal. So the pulling force is equal to the to the force that's dragging down. But then if you notice, I have a tension here. A tension that is that's pulling this body and then the other, that, that one that's pulling it down and then the one that's pulling the 200 body up. And I say the net forces have to be equal. So my tension is going to cancel out because I'm dealing with the system as a whole, which means my 1000 is going to be equal to the forces this side, in excluding the tension for this case. So I'm going to have 1000 equal to 800 G. Theta plus 200 G and theta plus the resistances F1 and F2. So they want us to get the total frictional, the total frictional resistance in this case, which is F1 plus F2. That's now the total frictional resistance. So substituting for that, we know that G is 9.8. Now uh, sine theta we have it as 1 of 14 plus 200 times 9.8 times 1 of 14 plus F1 plus F2. So uh, completing that, this is going to be 560 and that will be 140 plus F1 and F2. So um, this becomes 700, 500 plus that. So 1000 minus 700 is going to give me my total resistance, which is F1. Plus F2, that is 1000 minus 700. Yeah, but then since this is just what I had, I could conclude and say that the total resistance which for this case is uh, F1 plus F2 is going to be equal to 300 and that's my first part. So moving on, uh, so the second part, we've been asked, okay, I've given us uh, the friction, let's say if the frictional resistance of the car is 280, so which means I now have the F1 for the car. So they want me to find the tension. So you look at this, the first time I did it, I didn't split my, I worked with the whole system as a whole and my tension cancelled out. But right now they want us to get the tension. 
So I'm going to have to split a little bit the, ma the mass, the 800 kilogram mass since I've been given the friction in that one. So that is going to be, once again, use a ruler for this. Frictionary resistance has been given to us at 280. Then we have a tension pull in this body. And then the as far to the incline, which we got at 560 here. And we have this pulling force of the engine. 1,000 meters. So same thing, we know that at, at, at steady speed, the acceleration is equal to zero. There are four magnet forces are equal. So I'm simply going to equate this. And so 1,000 is going to be equal to 560 plus the tension plus 280. So computing that, you have your tension as 160. Um, thank you.